All right, I usually make um, something like Hamelman's Pan Rustique. It has a very wet starter. This one has um, a, st a lot stiffer pre-ferment starter, so I'm going to mix that up and we'll give that a try for tomorrow. It uses 12 ounces, or I'm using 12 ounces of flour. And an eighth of a teaspoon yeast. Mix that up in there a little bit. Then I'm going to reset the scale. Then this, I'm going to use 7.2 ounces of water. differ than the other one. So it's, you know, it's looking like this shaggy mess. But you want to work it all in there. Don't add any extra water. This is 3.30 in the afternoon, and then we're going to let this sit overnight for about a total of 16 hours. should end up being nice and bubbly, even though it's rather stiff right now. Anyways, looks like that. And I'm going to put a plate on here, let it sit, and we'll get back at it tomorrow. All right, it's um, about 9 a.m. the next day. Um, the starter is, it, you know, expanded, and then it kind of fell back a little bit when I touched it. So it's just, just about ready, although it's really still kind of stiff, but we'll see what happens here. Now I'm going to use a mixer instead of doing it by hand because it's not strong enough anymore. So we've got the um, KitchenAid mixer here. I'm going to just start adding things in. I've measured out 12 ounces or 12, yeah, 12 ounces of flour, um, two and a half teaspoons of salt. I'm going to put that in and mix it a little so the yeast doesn't come in direct contact right away. And then uh, half a teaspoon of the yeast instant. I use the instant rapid rise. So we'll just dump it all in here. And 9.2 ounces of water, and that's going to be add up to a total of 68% um, hydration for the starter and the ingredients for the dough all together. 68% hydration. Now we're just going to put this on low and let it mix till everything gets incorporated and then um, once all the dry and liquid are pulled together <clears throat> I'll cover it and let it um, rest for about 20 minutes up to um, let the water hydrate 
all the flour. So it's kind of roughly mixed. All the dry stuff is pretty much pulled in. I'm going to let that sit 20 minutes or 30. I'll be back. Well, I've let it sit 20 minutes. It's still kind of a gloop, but it's a little more watery looking. Now I'll just go ahead and knead it with the machine here for probably 10 minutes. Um, what you want it to do is to get from uh, being wet looking to being um, smooth and dry looking on the surface. So we'll be trying for that. Uh, you know, about that speed and then sometimes I go up to this speed. It's been about 10 minutes. We'll take a look. I've stopped it a couple times to look at it. And you can see it's not as wet and shiny looking. It's kind of a dull color. And it's got a lot of strength there. So I think I'm going to call that good. Jeffrey says you can over knead these things when they don't have any strength. But so. So I'm going to get it off of here and then let it um, ferment for 50 minutes, do a, a turn it, let it go 50 minutes again, turn it again, and then let it finish. Uh, so I'll show you that later. And uh, Jeffrey says we should have it fermenting at 75 degrees and since this house is pretty cold, I heat the oven up just a touch and then I keep this um, thermometer in here so I know I don't end up cooking it um, before it should be cooked. So it's, see it's rising up a little bit too quick now. So I'll just crack this open until uh, it can cool off. I'm going to put the probe inside the bread. Hold on a second. So it's, it's settled in at 81 so I must have um, kneaded the dough, you know, uh, too vigorously because it's got um, the temperature of the dough is a little warm. But we just um, don't let it get much higher than that and I'm going to let it ferment for 50 minutes and then give it a turn. So we'll be back. Alright, it's been about 30 minutes. <clears throat> I'm going to turn this thing out and do the folding. You can see it's Lots of air in there. And it's tacky, but it's not really sticky. Let's see. Fold it over. And see how how much it's stretching that really has got some strength and this folding is supposed to you know give it more strength fold it again and then back in the tub for another 50 minutes all right now ready for the second fold
Nice and stretchy. Look at that. Now, um, I think another 40 or 50 minutes and then we'll be able to um, shape it. Alright, um, I've decided I'm going to make three small round loaves and I'm going to get these cloths prepared to um, line the bowls with. I've turned the oven on to preheat with a pizza stone in there. I'm going to let it preheat for an hour so that the stone has time to get up to temperature. And for these you can dust with um, regular flour or I use um, rice flour but it, it doesn't have gluten so it doesn't it um, is less sticky. So then I just put one of these in each one of these bowls. Once I get the bread um, divided up and put in here, we're going to let it proof for about an hour or so in the bowls. Sometimes I weigh these pieces to get them really close, but I'm not gonna. I'm just gonna try to do it in thirds by eye. So of course they're not gonna be right, but that's okay. Dust in my hands a little. Not very sticky, but now Jeffrey would let this stuff rest. I'm just going to knock the big bubbles out, not do too much, and then just go ahead and shape them into rounds and plunk them in there. I just can't bring myself to follow the recipe like I'm supposed to. So Spin them around like this and try to tighten up that bottom. See, it's not getting tight because too much flour on it, probably. Put them in upside down in the bowls. Letting the, there's no flour here. I'm letting the uh, friction between the tile and the damp dough tighten up that bottom seam. And it's, eh, it's working a little bit.
This one's got less flour on the bottom, so it should tighten up better. We'll see. Maybe not. I'm kind of tucking the edges with the edges of my hand, tuck the bottom part of the loaf in. Yeah, that's a little better. And then, dust the bottoms of these with flour. And then I'll cover them with saran wrap and let them go for about an hour, hour and a half. We'll see. The oven's been heating for an hour and the dough here, the loaves have been proofing for about an hour. So I'm going to go ahead and put one of them in and let the other two go another half hour and just see what happens. I use, I use parchment paper instead of flouring the board or something like that. It just, sometimes if you use cornmeal or flour, I just don't like it. It doesn't work so good. And um, I used to try to use that razor blade. I spent a lot of money on those things and couldn't, I couldn't do it. So I use, I just use a bread knife now to make the slit. Try to do it on an angle. Sometimes I get it, sometimes I don't. And then, instead of putting water in the oven this time, I'm going to just spray the loaf with this water bottle. And we'll see what happens. So, I'm going to put it in on the stone. Really can't see. I'm going to turn it over here. It doesn't matter, but anyway. So that'll be pretty much done in a half hour, then I'll put the others in. Alright, this first one's been in there about 40 minutes. And I'm thinking it's done. And I like, I like to get um, a darker crust these days. It just gives much more flavor. It's more, just a nicer loaf if you let these babies get um, dark. Now, it puffed up a little bit in the oven, but my little slit didn't curl open like it should. But I struggle with that. But anyways, I think it's going to be a good loaf. We'll let it cool over here. And we'll get the others in. Alright, here's loaf number two. And if you haven't noticed, I got two small loaves and one bigger loaf because I should have weighed them. I didn't. Again, I'm just going to spritz it. I get it kind of wet. There's a lot of water in there. But I think that's good. Get this other one going. big one. Okay. It. Now I'm baking these at 450. Usually Jer Jeffrey's um, stuff goes at 460, but this recipe calls for 450. So, I'm done. so here we go. And they'll go for 30 or 40 minutes, and we will show you what they look like later. Well, there they are. I didn't get that big oven spring to get that big curl that I like in there, but these are going to be, it's going to be good bread. But it's like hit or miss. I still don't know quite how to get that, that big oven spring that I like to see. So, still working on it. And here's the inside, not as uniform of a crumb as I'd like to have, but still not bad.